uh, an airplane. Oh, okay. Okay, came out of Teterboro, so that's why it came uh, came from the west side. Now, just keep your eyes on it. Top speed, 300 miles per hour. It provides assault transport for troops and equipment, and is capable of operating from ships or from expeditionary airfields. And it's replacing the Marine Corps CH-46 and the CH-53 helicopters. Let's listen to the sound of this aircraft. It's got vertical takeoff and landing and short takeoff and landing capabilities. Vertical takeoff and landing, there's an acronym for that as there is for almost anything in the military. That's VTOL and STOL, short takeoff and landing capabilities, using the tilt rotor technology. When the engine the cells and rotors are vertical, it can take off and land and hover like a helicopter. And once airborne, the engine the cells are rotated, as we see here, into this position to uh, achieve a uh, fixed wing flight. Now watch it. You can see now that the rotors are now tilting and it's going, it's in transitional flight right now. All of that is accomplished by the left thumb of the pilot on the thrust lever. If for some reason the pilot injures his left thumb and is unable to use it, he cannot fly the Osprey because it is necessary, literally necessary, to change the rotors. They can transport 24 combat troops, 20,000 pounds of internal fuel, or up to 15,000 pounds of external cargo. It can refuel air to air, be stored uh, and be stored above an aircraft carrier or a salt ship. It folds up unbelievably into hover mode. The pilot has a stick coming up through the floorboards like any other military aircraft and a thrust lever that's in his or her left hand. Now you can see the cargo door open in the back. Like I said, 24 troops. Look at the downwash. Those are hurricane force winds under those rotors. You can see the, the, uh, the water being stirred up along the surface. The engine nacelles rotate in excess of 90 degrees, and that's why you can see it back up right now. It's about uh, 98 or 99 degrees of, uh, of rotatability. I swear I heard a backup beat, didn't you? It's also used by the Special Operations Command and their requirement for a high-speed, long-range vertical aircraft, air, uh, uh, vertical airlift aircraft. When all is said and then done, they'll have about 360 of these airplanes. I should say aircraft, and they cost just shy of 70 million dollars each. Able to do a pedal turn. The pilot has the stick in his or her right hand, the thrust lever in the left hand, and pedals, enabling it to do a dance. Sideways, front, forwards, backwards. And in the search and rescue mission, when the pilot can't look down, there are other crew members who can who will then communicate with the pilot to go left, right, forward, or back to get in position to affect the rescue operation.
time ago, March 19th, 1989. It first transitioned from vertical to horizontal flight about six months later. When they want to get it stowed aboard an aircraft carrier, because space is so precious, there is a button inside the cabin that the pilot will press once the engines are shut down. And what it does is literally rotates that entire wing with the engine nacelles you see at the, at the wingtips, 90 degrees to take care of its sideways girth, if you will, lines it up with a fuselage, and then each of the three rotor blades of the engines on each of the nacelles also fold back. So it ends up having a very, very narrow profile on the deck of a carrier. position for fixed wing flight. With the rotors turning, the wingspan 84 feet 6 inches, it's 56 feet 10 inches long. It's 21 feet high from the uh, bottom of the tires to the top of the nacelles. And, and if there is, if there is for some reason a failure of one of the engines, there is automatically a transition of the power from the good engine into the other rotor. That happens very, very quickly, so there's no loss of control. By the way, I mentioned earlier that the pilot could be a him or a her. It's a female flying this aircraft today, ladies. This is Rob Ryder. Can you hear me? Hey, we heard a lady 
uh, just a couple of minutes ago talking to the air boss. Is she flying the aircraft? And her name is? Shelby Gowdy, say hello to the folks at uh, the Jones Beach Air Show. <laughs> hello, State of New York, indeed. Hey, thanks for a great demo today, you guys. I sure appreciate it. Roger that. Thanks so much, you guys. Great demo. Thanks a lot for the support. You bet. That's the crew of the MV-22 Osprey. Sorry, I didn't have the switches thrown properly a moment ago. I thought I had her all set. Get one more pass of the Osprey before they head back to Teterboro. They can deploy anywhere in the world within 36 hours. A U.S. Marine commander assaulted, assaulting a defended shoreline needs to get his troops and equipment ashore as fast as possible, but landing craft is slow. They make easy targets, helicopters are horribly vulnerable to enemy fire, and until now the only way to minimize that risk would be to launch them from as close to shore as possible, and the Osprey has helped overcome that challenge because it can transition from rotary winged flight to fixed wing flight in a matter of seconds, enabling it to fly literally twice as fast as a helicopter. There is a phenomenon in the helicopter known as retreating blade stall. I don't want to get into the physics of that, but that does limit how fast a helicopter or a conventional helicopter can go. And uh, there you see it transitioning again with the nacelles rotating almost straight up. And it's in that position when the rotor blades don't actually get close to the ground that they can use for short takeoff and landing operations or STALL, S-T-O-L. 